and change, change the world as we know it today. We have a few uh, major breakthroughs in the research field of nanosatellites. We've been able to miniaturize the uh, satellite into a sub kilogram. The right name is not nanosatellite, but picosatellite. The miniaturization of core elements leads to a major reduction in satellite cost and allows launching swarms of nanosatellites that can work together with one another. It can create a network of sensors that can cover a wide geographical area allowing for greater collection and analysis of data from space. We have been able to improve the energy efficiency <coughs> of those uh, satellites uh, by means of improved communication. Radio communication is a conventional way of communicating between satellites and between satellites and planet Earth. Optical laser communications provides better and faster data transfer than current radio wave technologies. But because we are aiming a sharp, tiny, very accurate laser from the satellites to planet Earth. We need a different toolbox. So we improved the robotic system of aiming Pico satellites, and we also improved the existing solution for having accurate position, for accurate navigation system in space for Pico satellites. A small satellite. Of course, the less power you need, the launch it. And this is why miniaturizing the satellite is of great importance to us in Israel and around the world. This is why the uh, Nano Satellite Center at Ariel University is doing very, very important work. As we can see here, this is a NASA project, okay, on uh, laser communication uh, to speed up uh, uh, data flow with a high bandwidth from ISS to Earth. And this is this that project very inspired us to do uh, a low cost, uh, affordable FSO communication. The FSO, the free space optic communication, uh, we chose it first of all because it's cool. And the next is the next generation of the communication. So uh, the laser used the communication, like if you said, races. <coughs> it's very sharp and tiny. And the benefit is it's unlicensed. You don't need any regulation. You, you save a, a lot of big problem with <coughs> all the other communication. Although you have uh, another problem with the direction, because the it, because it's very hard to aim a laser, and <coughs> the distance is too much. It's like it will be uh, at least 300 uh, kilometers. So we need to be uh, precise it on a milli radian, and we need to use it on a uh, two uh, controlling system. One is the traditional gimbal, and the other is the uh, MEMS Miro technology. The MEMS Miro technology help us to do the fine tuning of the aiming laser because it's a very precise. And then, <coughs> as you can see on the next, mo uh, and then sorry, and then two picture you see the very precise of the, the laser. Here you can see two pictures. They're taking about two meter change, and you can see here you see the laser, and here you don't see the laser. It's taking about ten kilometers and with the uh, a very commercial of the shelf laser, everybody can buy in any electric store or an eBay or something like that, is less than five milliwatt power. And still you can see with the change of two meter, you didn't see the laser. So we expected for this chip of kind of laser that is the, the light will spread all over the area. And <laughs> you don't see these changes, but if we see those changes in that kind of the picture, we, we expected that with much a high level laser, you, we can say the data from space to Earth. On the next movie, we see the precision of MEM te mirror technology with the a laser to aiming on a moving spot. As you can see, even the spot is moving. I think that is moving very fast. You can see the laser didn't fail to spot on the moving on the uh, moving track, 
and just help us to understand that with MEMS technology, you can uh, aiming the laser to a very uh, uh, to a spot in the earth, even that <coughs> our satellite will be on a uh, movement. Although we have the laser communication, we need to use a standard uh, traditional uh, communication because we want, uh, <coughs> first of all, we have two problems. One is the laser communication can't work 24-7 because we don't have 100 ground stations to Earth. And even we have uh, uh, thousands of grounds in, in the Earth, we can't use it any time because don't, uh, don't, uh, not all the time the laser can communicate with Earth. So we need a traditional communication to tell the laser to aim to a new spot or to change the configuration. We need to use a, a low, low bit uh, data uh, telemetry to help, to help us to understand what happened with the satellite and to tell him now to, <coughs> to communication with a new spot on the Earth. Like everybody, we have the uh, continuous aiming problem. We have the attitude the problem, the speeding, the location. And uh, we, we wanted to, to try to, <coughs> to uh, uh, solve this problem with a regular magnetotorical or reaction wheel. Like I said before, it's not a very precise. And, <coughs> and we need to be more precise on the aiming uh, with the MEMS mirror. And I, we want to do this. We want to do this with our star <coughs> tracker. The star tracker is an algorithm <coughs> that developer in KCG laboratory by uh, Revital Marvel. Right now, he, she is a PhD student in our laboratory. And the star tracker has uh, two major uh, useful things. He don't need any gravity, like the IMS sensor needed. And he can, uh, <coughs> Uh, compete with a uh, low light, <coughs> what, we have, what we have in space. So what we want to do is not to, to build a, a very high cost uh, star tracker. We want to, do, to build an algorithm that can use commercial of the shelf device to, uh, to understand the orientation with the tracker. Here you can see two different of picture, one with the daylight, one in the night. And you can see that Although here we have a, a, a light that need to, uh, to uh, get problem to understand the vision of the stars, you can see here and here you can find the stars to the picture and understand the orientation of the camera. What is the big major problem of that? In a commercial of the shelf camera, we have a big problem with the calibration uh, to fix the distortion <coughs> of the light. With a high level camera, with a very precise lens, short narrow, you can calibrate the camera and then you, the, the calibration didn't break uh, because of the distortion. <laughs> of the commercial of the chef, if you calibrate the lens and you do a little bit change it, the calibration has break, break and you need to calibrate it again. We try to test it. The algorithm of Revital has <coughs> can break through that and then you, we can understand that we don't need a uh, calibrate again. We can use a commercial of the shelf, low cost device to understand our orientation and to aiming the laser from space to earth. Another thing that we want to do on the, to, to, to do on the Pico satellite is to have a measuring the uh, radiation uh, gamma ray and we want to do this right now. We have this spectrometer gamma that we buy from Oxford, some laboratory that we uh, work with them. And uh, <coughs> right now we have a problem to squeeze with <laughs> to the Pico satellite because this is more than the Pico satellite. But uh, this spectrometer gamma can measure up to 70 uh, mega electron volt uh, gamma ray. And uh, here you can see two graphs that demonstrate the density versus the full size. It has a titanium uh, scintillator uh, uh, detector. <coughs> and here you can see the energy change is because the integral of the, uh, of the density. And, and we know we have a problem because on, a, on a 300 kilometers, it's a low orbit, we have a problem with high density of charging uh, electric pulse. So it needs to uh, 
will this will be a problem from the sensor to measure it. And we know that maybe we need to be the, the first. Or we didn't uh, find any information of that measuring uh, in our physics uh, uh, part. <coughs> Okay. Uh, part of our research, we are launching a lot of uh, meteorologic balloons. Uh, first of all, we love to do it. It's very fun. And, and we go for experiments outside, and everybody happy, and beers and everything. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. And uh, part of our research uh, is to do uh, experiments that low-cost experiments. Uh, that you can <coughs> perform on a meteorologic balloon. So this is uh, actually our payload. Uh, we have on it uh, an idle uh, IMS, temperature, pressure, humidity, Geiger. The Geiger is very interesting because Geiger costs, sometimes it costs a little money if you want a good Geiger. We found out in SparkFun a 70 bucks Geiger that may perform very good uh, uh, Results. Uh, GPS, standard GPS like uh, U-Blocks uh, N8 or something like that, uh, light. Uh, part of our research is FSO or transmit information by light or laser. So we are gimbalized uh, LED lights or laser from a high altitude balloon and then we can check our control. Okay, control. Uh, I missed something. As, as you can see, uh, a five black balloon here and a latex balloon above them. Why there is five black balloons? Because we are trying to do a, a long endurance balloon and this acts like a similar like thermostat. So we, we do succeed to stack a, a, a balloon between 15 kilometers to 20 kilometer with those. <coughs> Uh, and we have a, a, a felt-set mechanism with a antifreeze liquid inside the payload, so we can send a message to the communication <coughs> module, and then we uh, drop, uh, drop uh, the liquid, and then we control the attitude, okay? Uh, we succeed for 18 hours now, until now, uh, and we are believe that we are conquered the, the few days until a week or something like that in the next experiment. Uh, this is one crazy uh, experiment to bring back home an RC plane from high altitude. Why we want to bring back the, the uh, RC plane? Because uh, we, are, we don't have a lot of money, we want the, the sensors back. So we try to do it and we succeed by, uh, this is an experiment with five kilometers only. This is the pattern of the balloon. We quick released the, the RC plane in a five kilometer and it came back and it was a little crash. <laughs> <laughs> it came back, uh, something like uh, 100 meters from us. Uh, with autonomous, completely autonomous, it came, it came uh, with a controller uh, back to our real. This is some of our boards. We are making boards for the, for the payload. Uh, here you can see we're using an arm um, uh, controller, Tinsley. Uh, we're using the Geiger, using uh, a nine of you can <coughs> see all, all the uh, components. Uh, just for demonstration. Here you can see the Geiger uh, measurement that Phil did before. This is the Geiger from Sparkman. This is the standard LoRa, like everybody did the day before. And this is the payload <coughs> with the liquid. We do a lot of tests to understand how we can handle in space. We can go to space, we can demonstrate space in the laboratory. We don't believe actually in uh, theory, we believe in doing things. We believe that we, when, we, when you fail, you get more experience uh, than when you do a test on the laboratory. <laughs> the laboratory is clear, uh, clearly from any object that uh, can change the, the, the measurement. And here you can see the measurement is called a regular browser maximum. You can see the, the change <coughs> in the gamma rays. And it, it's very uh, uh, high performance to 70 bucks Geiger to understand that you can take the measurement and to uh, uh, <coughs> try to uh, equal, uh, 
uh, try to, to do it with the NASA test to understand if it's good or not, and we see this is very uh, mm. good. Just a minute. Uh, this is a sound of payload, okay? With all the atomic components. This is a water bottle with the uh, antifreeze uh, liquid. This is the little pump. And this is a typical payload. Continue. This is a... Uh, this is our ground station. We need to have a lot of, we have a lot of cars, like you know, <laughs> and so we need to be visible. Uh, this is the, the telescope that we're tracing uh, the lights of the laser, okay? And uh, all the antennas and all the guys over here having fun, and that's it. Basically, the main goal that we want to go to him is that we have a lot of ground station in Earth to have uh, collaborating with uh, Delft, with uh, Taiwan, with Japan, with USA, never mind, uh, it seems that Netherlands is a uh, uh, pretty, uh, <laughs> <Thank you so laughs> <sorry>. because, <laughs> because the cloud <laughs> is, is not so expensive. So uh, in Netherlands, I think it, it can help 10% well, of the time, something like that. <laughs> and uh, if we have a global grid of ground station, it's less than 2000 cost ground station, we can send data all around the world, even in Mojave Desert, in the Sahara Desert. With the laser, I rem remember that the MEMS technology can aiming in something like 10 degrees. In 300, 300 kilometers, 10 degrees need to be something like, don't know, 15 kilometers, something like that. It's, it's help you to move uh, big data from one side to another and to help uh, to transfer uh, high boundary data. So uh, this is our main goal. We want to try on the first pico satellite to understand how we can succeed to do that. If we were succeed to do that, we believe, we want to believe we succeed to do that. And uh, we want everybody, if you want to collaboration with us, <coughs> we would like to do this. This is our uh, emails and the, uh, <coughs> and the link to our uh, website. website. And uh, but our vision in the end of the way is to send a swarm of nano or pico satellites that communicate with uh, each other and transform, for example, it's a, I don't want to say everybody say it, but, <coughs> but we really want to do it. Uh, for example, internet for Africa or for something like that, okay, to transform a, a, a massive swarm to uh, global communication, like everybody says, by a la laser silk, okay? Uh, that's it, thank you very much. Well, thank you for your presentation. We have time for questions, if there are any. What, what's your next step? I mean, okay, that's nice. Where do you go, what's, what's the next milestone? for you? I mean, you are, in terms of the business plan. You have a business plan, or are you uh, just sticking totally. university, or what's? We, 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 are <laughs> we are a university, so university don't have a business plan. Right. University have uh, uh, academic uh, uh, milestones. For, for us, the next step is to launch uh, with uh, Tom and his company uh, the first uh, nano satellite or pico satellite, P, two P's or something like that, and then to check our control system, to check the ability to do uh, the attitude first. Okay, it's it's very hard, very hard to to do experiments with the attitude uh, control in, in in Earth. We don't have uh, uh, places like NASA for sure. Uh, and then we, we we understand on the first satellite what we do, what we did wrong, what we did wrong. Then we're gonna uh, change the things. We are intent to launch every six months or year, depends the launching. Uh, 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 companies, uh, and in each launch, we're gonna change something. In the end of the way, we want to transmit a laser to REL. Uh, okay. After we conquer this, we will uh, move to the next step, next step or next milestone. Okay. Any question? Thank you. I found it interesting. You told that 
Yeah, who in order to that they because for now to see if it's too much to 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 make the region no communication, they block this one. Continue, yeah, that was it. In, in, uh, in our experiment, uh, on a high altitude balloon, it's working. Uh, we, we didn't try it on space. It's one of our, our tests or our experiments. We we sure gonna uh, talk with them, uh, but we have in Israel uh, a company that calls Gilat. Gilat uh, works with the region, so they were gonna support us on on that side. So I believe they will figure it out how to do it. If not, we gonna uh, we don't, we're not gonna send it. That's it. I don't <laughs> mention it, but in the <laughs> in the Lora test that we have done with the uh, long-lasting balloon, we succeed to record of uh, uh, sending uh, communication with less than 25 milliwatt uh, energy to 140 kilometers. The bow that is something like about a <coughs> sub uh, one kilobit per second. And with this <laughs> bow that you can actually send a, a, a full duplex data to the satellite because if, if we succeed to do it with 25 uh, milliwatts, so if you duplicate it something by two or four, you can, you can reach to uh, the space. Although you have the problem with the license with the uh, UHF, VHF the, to communicate with RF uh, to space. It's not, it's not so right because the region gives you uh, uh, not an accurate uh, measurement. Yeah. So if, if you want to know exactly, for high altitude balloon, if you want to know where is the payload, you, you need an accurate GPS. Uh, for space, maybe it's, it's not so important for high altitude balloon for sure. Mapping of the sky. No, no, no. We don't do any image processing. Image processing is very hard, very complicated. It is a lot of power of the CPU. If you want to aim it to a new target, you need to. If you do an AI, you need you need a new data. Uh, uh, so we don't want to do this. We want to do this only with the Star Tracker. The Star Tracker gives us a very high precision, uh, as the experience that that's a result do. In I give. Level. I will give a few words about the Star Tracker. Star Tracker is a. Uh, it's a component, it's a, it's a way that everybody knows. The, 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 the innovation of, of our Star Tracker is to use a, a commercial off the shelf uh, product. Uh, any smartphone can do, uh, with the algorithm of Revitar, any smartphone can do uh, a Star Tracker with a high, uh, high, uh, high performance. Uh, we, we achieved the way to, uh, to uh, to fix the challenge of uh, of, dis of distortion of uh, uh, of the lens, this is one of the achievements. Uh, that's why we want to check it. We want to check here in, in, uh, in, uh, on Earth. It's working perfect, and we want to check it on the satellite to understand. Maybe we'll fail, but we need to fail to understand. Uh, that's it. Okay, Peter. Okay, thanks. This, this is what I was thinking. I'm sorry. 